Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to Wealth Builder Wednesday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grab your coffee. Grab your coffee. Come on, beautiful people. Grab your coffee. Let's come in here to Wealth Builder Wednesday. I'm Teresa B. Wilson, your kingdom. I'm kingdom wealth. I'm your teacher, your coach. I'm your mentor. And I love to talk about supernatural wealth. So I want you to Invite all your friends, like, share, follow, anybody that needs supernatural wealth. Anybody that really is on the struggle bus, needs to come off the struggle bus, I would love to talk to them this morning about supernatural wealth. We're going to be talking about the poverty mindset, and you may think that you don't have a poverty mindset, and you may just have. So I want you to come on here with me. Let's come on in here live with me. And let's talk about it. And also, if you're here live, uh, leave a comment. Let me know that you're here with me live. Grab some coffee. My name is Teresa. Grab you some coffee and let's talk. So today I want to talk to you about the poverty mindset. So <clears throat> the thing about the poverty mindset is a lot of people think that they don't have a poverty mindset. and Or either other people just don't really think about it. But I just want to talk to all Christians because the poverty mindset goes against the word of God. And so I'm talking to all Christians who are really ready to access and activate their supernatural wealth because the poverty mindset says that you can't have it. The poverty mindset says, well, I need to stay poor. And so I wrote down some questions that I wanted to ask you to see. Hey, good morning, Marsha. Good morning, Sandy. So glad to have you guys here. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions to see if you do have a poverty mindset. And if you do have a poverty mindset, how can you change that and not have one? So um, I'm on my phone also in the live so that there we go. So that I can I want to see your comments. I, I can see them a little quicker if I'm on the live there. There we go. All right. So what is the poverty mindset? Well, a lot of a lot of Christians really feel like that you need to be poor, that Jesus was poor. They they forget Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs eight. No, I think it's Proverbs eight and nine, maybe second Corinthians. Let me see. Um, though Jesus, I'm going to look it up. Um, so I know the scripture. Um, because in that word, it says that you might be rich. So let's find out what scripture that is. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 8 and 9. And it says, and I'm going to quote from the word of God. For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. And so that's the word of God. And so then we have Christians who believe that preachers should live poor, that Jesus was poor, but he became poor so that you would be rich. But the other thing is he knew how the kingdom operated. So even when he became poor, it wasn't like he didn't have provision. And so a lot of people will quote the scripture, well, well, money is the root of all evil. And the word says it's the love of money. It's not money that's the, the root of all evil. And the other thing is if you, Preachers are poor. How do they have the impact that they have? See, God blesses whoever he wants to, but maybe they tap into something for the kingdom. And in that, in the kingdom, there's plenty. And so if you will look at these big mega churches that everybody seems to hate, um, they are doing so much for the world. They are reaching their, their community. They're reaching their state, but they're also doing things for the world that other people can't even possibly know that they're doing. And one is Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen, his brother is a, uh, is a surgeon and they have mercy ships that go out to different countries to perform surgeries for people who otherwise couldn't afford it. So here, here, Joel Osteen, he needs to have money in order to send out these mercy ships where people can be impacted for the kingdom of God. And so we think that preachers need to stay poor. Pastors need to stay poor. We think that we need to stay poor. And that's not the word of God. The word of God is that everything we have need of is already provided for us. And wealth is a byproduct. The word says that he gives seed to the sower. So he's, if you give to the poor, it, in Proverbs, it says that you will lack nothing. He who gives to the poor will lack nothing. And so if we don't understand these scriptures, we think that the poverty mindset is, um, I can't afford that. 
I'm not, how am I going to pay for that? I don't want to pay $70,000 for a truck. I don't want to pay $500,000 for a house. Well, you will never have it. That's a poverty mindset. Um, not, I'm not saying that you got to want a, a half a million dollar house, but what I'm saying is saying that I, only, I ain't wanting that, right? You're saying, oh, keep me poor. I'd rather stay poor. I would rather not have a house. I would rather rent. I would rather, and God, when we take territory is when we take land. So when we buy land and God, and in the word, it says that you're going to live in houses you didn't build and you're going to plow in fields that, that were not yours. You're going to, I mean, you're going to reap in fields that you didn't plow. So what does that mean? It means that God wants you to take territory for the kingdom of God. And so now we have these big conglomerates out there taking over the world and doing all of this debauchery because God's people are waiting for the rapture, which I believe in the rapture. I don't care if you're pre-trib, post-trib, no-trib, when-trib. It doesn't matter. You have to occupy till we leave here. And so what happens is we get into this poverty mindset of, well, what does it matter? I don't need to own a business because the rapture is going to take place. I don't need money because the rapture is going to take place. Well, you can't live the rest of your life for the rapture. You have to live for the kingdom because the Lord says, I want to bring my kingdom to earth. Even, even Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are to demonstrate the kingdom. And so in Ecclesiastes 10, 19, it says a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answers all things. I didn't make that up, beautiful people. That's Ecclesiastes 10, 19. Money answers all things, right? So money has its place. Do we have the love of money? No. But do we want to have impact for the kingdom? Yes. And the, and the word says that, that a poor man, that nobody wants to hear what he's got to say. And so why? Because you, you're you not rich. When you are rich, when you have wealth, um, and I'm not talking about packing this wealth up in barns. I'm talking about funding the kingdom of God, furthering the kingdom, and, um, and going about your everyday life in the kingdom of God and using heaven's economy and pulling that down into earth so that you can tell people Jesus loves you. So that you can give to the poor. Because the poor, what do they need? Hey, good morning, Monique. Mwah. Good morning to all my friends this morning. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, but you have to have impact. You can't impact them in order to accomplish the purpose that God wants to, to accomplish. And so that's why it says that money answers all things. So if you needed to uh, build a house for homeless people without money, you can't build it. So if you want to have a mercy ship, how are you going to get the ship out there? If you want to impact the kingdom and really bless a church in the neighborhood, or you want to go feed the homeless, it takes money to do all of those things. And so yet we have this poverty mindset that says, well, um, good morning, Pastor Jim. Good to have you here too. And so we have this poverty mindset that says, well, I need my preacher to be poor. I, I'm not giving him all my tithes. I'm not going to give the preacher all my money. All he ever does is take up an offering. That's not biblical. In the word, it says to bring your tithe and offering. It says to bring them, to happily give. It says to you that your job is to fund the kingdom so that your pastor can have impact that he needs to have. If your pastor is working a full-time job, okay, how does he have the time to seek the Lord, to get the word, to visit the sick, to visit in prison? How does he have time? <laughs> That's exactly right, Pastor Jim. You're not a poor pastor. So how does he have time? He, you have Your souls are at stake. Your family's souls are at stake. So he needs to have the time in order to bring the word, which is meat to uh on sundays wednesday nights or whenever you gather and so we think that jesus was poor and that that's just not true everything he needed was provided for um but it says that he became poor that you would be rich that's second corinthians 8 and 9 why because he took everything that you have need of on the cross he took everything that you possibly could ever need on the cross so that it could manifest here in this life 
And in um, Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Okay, so he gives you the power to create wealth. Why in the world would God give you the power to create wealth? So that you can have kingdom impact. So that you can give to the poor. So that you have, um, you can tell people that Jesus loves them. So if you go out to the homeless and you want to minister to the homeless, you want to feed them first. You need to be able to feed the homeless. You need to be able to impact your community. You know, I see a lot of churches that have chicken plate sales. And to me, I, I, I hate that. I disagree with it. And the reason why I disagree with it is because I don't ever want my community to think that my God can't supply for me. And so I don't want to have plate sales. I don't get, I don't do that. We, in fact, the last outreach that we did, we gave away chicken plates. We, we barbecue chicken and we gave it away. And the reason that we did is Jesus loves you. Not because we want to promote our church, not because we want to gather in numbers. We do the outreach in order to impact the kingdom and let people know in the community that Jesus loves you enough that he sent me here to cook this meal for you, to give you this meal. And if you understand that if you are selling chicken plates in, in a church or in a ministry and you're out here selling chicken plates, you, you're not impacting your community. I'm sorry, but you're not. Because your community is like, what? All those people going to that church and they can't keep the church doors open? You mean I got to buy a chicken plate? <laughs> No, we should be opening the church doors um, and having fish fries and having and giving away so you can meet the community, so that you can impact the community. You should be the shining light, the shining star. So people look at you and say, hey, what is going on over here? What is going on over here? What are these people doing that I'm not doing? And we should be the shining star. We shouldn't be the dog in the neighborhood. We need to be the light in the neighborhood. And so with a poverty mindset, we don't give because... Because we will go to Walmart, spend a hundred dollars, but if we gave a hundred dollars in church, we'd be like, "Whoo, I give them all that money. I gave them a hundred dollars." And yet, we have more kingdom impact by giving it to the church than we do at Walmart. And so here we are. We keep our funds to ourselves, and we stay in poverty because we don't understand that we are funnels. We're not barrels. We are funnels. God says, "I give seed to the sower, and it goes out. Give seed to the sower, and it goes out." And so in Proverbs 10, 22, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he has no sorrow to it. So what does that mean? That means that when God gives you riches, there's no toll. There's no sweat. You're not going out there digging ditches. You're not going out there plowing a field. That when God gets ready to bless you, what he does is gives you an opportunity to give so that it can be given back unto you. But if you hold back, so you have to give your way out of poverty. But if you hold back, what does God said? He holds back. Because he said, he who gives to the poor will never lack anything. That's in, that's in Proverbs. So if you have a poverty mindset, you're like, I can't afford to give $20. I can't afford to give $100. I can't afford to give $10. And so we'll go out to eat, sit there, have a meal, complain to the waitress, and leave her $2. I mean, how is that showing the kingdom? You know, I think the least amount that we should give as a tip should be $10 and just tell them Jesus loves them. That's it. $20, Jesus loves you. And so the boot camp that uh, that we have going on right now, praise the Lord, hallelujah, people are rocking and rolling and the testimonies are coming in and not even coming in, hey, Beverly, um, and not even coming in from what okay what they're receiving back we are getting testimonies from there but how they feel when they give it out now you're connected to it's like it's like a spirit connecting when you walk up to somebody and say here i want you to have this god loves you just to tell you that jesus loves you and that spirit connection and what that does for you 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 can't buy that you can't buy that in a drug you can't buy that in alcohol you can't buy the feeling that you have of being connected spiritually and anointingly with this person it is like heaven has just smiled in your spirit 
And so we walk around depressed and people walk around depressed and their anxiety and panic. Well, start giving out. Quit complaining and start going into the community and say, Lord, how can I impact the community for you today? How can I impact somebody at Walmart? Wherever you go, God put me on assignment that wherever I go, whatever I do, I can demonstrate your kingdom. And so is kingdom, is the kingdom all about money? No, it's about provision. He says, don't care what you're going to eat. Don't care about what clothes you're going to, what you're going to wear because it's all provided for you. He said, provision, the kingdom is all about provision. It means that we have anything that we have need of, we call it down from heaven. We're, we don't live on this earth. This, we are not citizens here. We're citizens in heaven. The day that you became born again, you are now a citizen of a kingdom, and it's called the kingdom of God. But you've been taught to live in Egypt. If you know the word, you know what I'm talking about. You've been taught how to live in Egypt, so you taught Egypt language, and heaven's currency is not this world's currency. In this world, it's full of greed. Like, let me hang on, pack up my barns, get more stuff, 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 stuff. But in heaven's economy, it's like give out. There's there's plenty. There's no lack. There's no lack of money. There's no lack of resources. There's no lack of provision. So everybody's like, well, the banks are going to crash and the economy is going to be in a recession. It doesn't matter if interest rates are at 5% or 50%. God is more than able to provide for what you need in any economy because his economy usurps the government's economy. God's kingdom overrules the government of this earth. And yet we think that this government is evil and God can't and God can't operate because his government is evil. Well, let me tell you something, beautiful people. Most of the time all government's evil. <laughs> I'll just, okay, that there, there are no great people until Jesus comes. And so, yes, we do I think you need to vote? Yes. And do I think that we need to stand against abortion? Do we need to stand against and stand up for righteousness? Yes, we do. But while we're doing that, we have to occupy till Jesus comes. And so in Ecclesiastes 9, 16, it says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So we know that wisdom is better than strength. But what does it say? But a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. They don't want to hear what you got to say. You don't have, as a poor person, you don't have an impact because people look at you like, who are you? <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? Because you can't bring people past where you're at. You can only bring people up to your level, but you can't take them past you because you, you, you haven't been there. You haven't walked that path. So you can only bring people up to where you're at. I love how single people will tell you how to live a married life. I love how people who don't have children, hey, Shauna, Shauna, so good to see you, um, Shauna. And I love how single people try to tell you how to be parents. Uh, I know one time my niece, I got her to write down everything that she was, <laughs> that she said, when I have children, uh, this is what's going, what I'm going to do. And I said, write it down. And so I happened to find it the other day. I was looking through some stuff and I found it. Now my niece is older and she has two boys. And... <laughs> So I wrote the piece of paper and I'm like, hey, here's what you said. Your children were never going to do. She's like, yeah, trash that. <laughs> trash everything I said. I was lying. I didn't have children. How do I know? Right? Because it's easy to say all of these things, but if you're poor and you don't have impact, I don't care how much wisdom you add. You could be a genius living on the street. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say because they're like, well, you're living on the street. <laughs> how are you going to tell me anything? Right? And so that's what I'm saying. When you are poor, you don't have the impact that comes with wealth. And so in that, it doesn't matter how wise you are, you just, you're not going to have any impact because people don't want to hear what you got to say. And I remember that I grew up in extreme poverty and really had a poverty, poverty mentality until my dad became a Christian. And then my dad was really the one who had the entrepreneur spirit. And really that's what don't tell nobody, but that's what put him in prison because he had his own moonshine business. <laughs> and so <laughs> I get my entrepreneur spirit, but I try to stay up, you know, up, up. I try to, 
obey the laws so and not go to prison. But he did, you know, he did have this entrepreneur spirit. So even though when he, I grew up and he and he went to prison, when he came out of prison and the Lord radically changed his life and he got saved, everything for us changed because this entrepreneur spirit that he had as a sinner, the gifts were without repentance. So he started uh, his own roofing company with my two brothers and everybody knew who he was. He had the, he was the number one roofing company in the area. And I, I remember uh, I worked for them as their secretary and so I asked him uh, one day, we had gone to measure up a job and it was for a doctor. And so I asked him, I said, um, I asked him one day, I said, are you intimidated by the wealth of the doctor? I said, does that intimidate you when you drive up and you see this doctor and he has all this wealth? I said, does that, does that intimidate you? And my dad said one of the most profound things in the world. And he said, he can be the greatest surgeon on the planet, but at the end of the day, he does not know how to roof his house, so I'm the expert. And so he relies on me and my expertise in order to, to do his roof and in order um, in order to, to know what to do, like to re-roof it or to tear the shingles off or what kind of roof. He said he's relying. This doctor can be a renowned surgeon, be the top one in the world, and yet I'm the expertise when it comes into roofing. And I'm like, you know what? That is really profound because a lot of times what happened is we get intimidated by other people with wealth, not understanding that if we would follow their pattern, that we could come out and have what they have. But the world teaches you to be jealous of that. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever read uh, Robert Kiyosaki, R Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But uh, I, love, I love people's stories and I love documentaries. And one thing that he was talking about in this book was... Um, he said that he went into his rich dad and his, his, his poor dad had a PhD, was the dean of a college and died poor. The rich dad that he followed was poor, owned a business and, and died with extreme wealth. So he was talking to, he called them his poor dad and his rich dad. The rich dad was a friend, uh, it was his friend's dad. So one day he was in the office and he saw all these people come in to get their paycheck. And their next one would come in, you know, it was back in the day when you got a paycheck and it wasn't like just put on your phone or put in your, your bank account. Hey, Laura. So what happened was he goes in there and he's watching all these people come in and get their paycheck. So when, when the last person came, Robert asked his rich dad, he said, um, you know, you're teaching me how to be rich. Why don't you teach these people? And he said, because not one person that worked for me ever asked me how to do it. Not one person. They were there to draw that paycheck, but they were not there to draw from the wisdom that he had. And, and he said at any moment they could have asked him and he would have gladly helped them out. He would have gladly. But what happens, we don't ask. We don't ask, how do I come out of poverty? How do I do this? How do I fix this? And we don't ask the people or follow the pattern of the people because we're too busy thinking about what we can't afford. I can't afford that. I can't do that. How am I going to pay for $300,000? How am I going to pay for half a million dollars? How am I going to pay for a $7,000 vehicle? How am I? And God's like, don't get the highways. That comes from Bill Winston. I didn't make that highways up. That came from Bill Winston. And I'm like, oh, I love that because we don't, we get the highways. We don't ask the Lord for anything because we don't know how we're going to pay for it. And God says you have not because you ask not. And so if you don't ask and you stay in that poverty mindset, how in the world are you ever going to come out? And, um, and so going back to my dad, my dad had such an amazing entrepreneur spirit and he loved business owners. I think that's where I get it. I love people that own businesses. I love to teach you about prosperity. I love to teach you about wealth. I love to teach you about provision. I love to partner with you and come into agreement with you. Why? Because I know that there's a way out if we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, but a poverty mindset, it has nothing to do with, with money. 
um, it has to do with the mindset that you have. And so most people that I find, and, and I can prove it to you, they don't have a money problem. They have a mindset problem. Look at all these people that play for the NFL and they lose all that money. Or you see big name stars that are broke that, you know, at one time they were the top of their game and they end up with absolutely nothing. And lottery winners that end up with nothing. And I remember I heard a word from T.D. Jakes and he was talking about um, that he was poor and had absolutely nothing and was broke. And then he became rich, poor, and because he didn't know what to do with the money. So somebody can make a million dollars a year, but if they don't know how to store that money, if they don't know how to make that money work for them, you're just rich, broke. And so he said once he learned how to, um, he received the wisdom of how to operate in a mindset besides a poverty mindset. So he had all this money, but still with a poverty mindset, he had to change the way he thought about money. He had to change the way that he would, um, that he set up his money to go out, to come in and go out. And you have to change all of that thinking because you can be a millionaire and be broke. You can make $150,000 a year and still be broke, still not have any money. Because what happens is the, the world teaches, get this stuff. You need all this stuff, 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 stuff. And the Lord says, impact the kingdom, impact the kingdom, impact the kingdom. And so most people um, don't have a money problem. They have that poverty mindset. So is a poverty mindset destructive? Yes, 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 yes. In the name of Jesus, a poverty mindset is destructive because it puts us in a role of a helpless victim. It says that there's no way out. And it makes us believe that, that we have all of hell against us and we can't ever come out because we've got all of these things coming against us and that we have no control of what's going on in our life. We have absolutely no control. I'm poor. Um, I had an aunt tell me that um, God made me poor. I'm going to stay poor. And that's just the way it is. God, God created some people to be rich and some people to be poor. And she worked for me. <laughs> get that okay and i'm like why do you have that mindset that's that's not a god mindset and guess what she's still poor today she's still poor she still doesn't have any money because that's a poverty mindset and i see it among christians all the time i hear them i even wrote this down it says if god wanted me to be rich he'd give it to me right and i don't believe in prosperity preaching are you one of them prosperity preachers yes 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 I am, and I don't apologize for it. Because let me tell you something, and I'm going to ask you this. When was the last time that the devil backed up a truckload of money to your door and said, here, I want to give you this so you'll sin, right? <laughs> no, the enemy tries to keep you poor. Why? Because it's against God's pattern. If the streets are paved with gold in heaven, and we have the gates of pearl, the streets of gold. There's no lack in the kingdom. God is not sitting up there on the throne fighting Satan. <laughs> it's not a clash of Satan and God. God is here. Satan is here. And we can cry and we can scream and we can like, God, I need money. Oh, I need money. I need money. I need money. And God is saying, it's provided. Read the word. <laughs> it's in here. Here are the keys to the kingdom. I provided for you everything you have need of. Learn how the kingdom operates. He said, seek you first. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all of this is going to be added to you. And that is if you know what the word of God says, then you can operate on that. But we want to turn around, spin around, jump three times, run around the building seven times. We want to scream, holler, lay on the floor and say, give it to me, God, please, God, please, please, please. Oh, Lord, you know, I need to pay my light bill. No, I need to pay my light bill. And God said, it's provided. It's provided. <laughs> Throw a tantrum tantrum. I can't give it to you any more than I've already given it to you. I can't give you more than I've already provided. But heaven's currency is faith. So hell moves us through fear. Heaven moves us through faith. 
So fear is like a dog whistle for the enemy. We go into this fear and here comes the hordes of hell. If we would go into faith, here would come all of heaven to act, be activated on our behalf. And so <clears throat> the poverty mindset says, okay, this mess ain't my fault. You know, I can't help I had all these bills. I can't help I was raised poor. This ain't my fault. It's just who I am. So I'm just going to sit here, watch TV. I'm not going to learn any new skills. I'm not going to learn about money. I'm not going to read a book. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to be on my phone scrolling, talking to my friends because God's in control. He knows what I need. And yet the word says you have not because you ask not. Right? And so to me, it's time to take responsibility and it's time to admit that our lives are where, where it's at because of the choices we made. And so it's time to break that poor, poor, pitiful me. You're not poor, poor, pitiful you. You are a child of the most high God. God has the earth in the palm of his hand. God knows the hair on your head. And when I lose one like I do sometimes, because sometimes my hair falls out. My husband's like, where all this hair come from? Well, God knows how many hair I have on my head and how many fell out. He knows how many grains of sand is on the beach. So he knows what you have need of. He says, I know what you need before you even ask. So ask me for what you want and then follow me. I have a way out. The Holy Spirit has a way out. God in his word says that he crowns our year with goodness and his path drips with abundance. But if, thank you, Beverly, about <laughs> saying that about my hair. Um, but his path drips with abundance. And yet we're on our own path. How many, how many of you, I know if you're in the boot camp, you've done this, right? But how many of you have sat down with the Holy Spirit and said, okay, I'm going to get my pen and paper and my word. Got my pen, got my paper, got my pen, got my paper. I got my glasses. Here's my pen. All right, God, speak to me. How do I get out of this mess? What is my first step? Because God knows the way. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We're not driven. We are led by the Holy Spirit. But we miss those cues if we don't spend time in the Word and time with the Lord. We will miss the cues that God's uh, trying to give us. And so complaining, okay, complaining is one of the surest way of knowing that you have a poverty mindset. Because let me tell you something, poor people talk about other people. <laughs> poor people talk about other people. Middle class people talk about problems. Rich people talk about business. They ain't got time to talk about other people. And I'm going to say that again. Poor people talk about each other. Right, they talk about people. Middle class people, uh, they they complain. They complain about everything. They complain about everything. Um, but what rich people talk about business, successful people talk about business. Why? Because they realize uh, to have a conversation. I don't need to talk about other people. I don't need to talk about other things going on. What I need to know is about business. And so if you were ever around people that complain a lot, they have terrible lives, it's because they're speaking it into existence. And then they just say, oh, um, I, I complain because I'm a realist. No, you're a complainer. And it says that if we have what our tongues say we have, then we need to quit complaining. We quit complaining. Um, I, one of the ladies that's in the boot camp, she said um, she's been saying for the last probably six, eight years. I'm going to retire in two years. I'm going to retire in two years. I'm going to retire in two years. And she says she happened to be somewhere and she, um, she was standing there washing her hands at the sink and God gave her a down, God gave her a download and said, if you keep speaking, you're going to retire in two years. You're never going to retire. You need to say, cause what is, what is, I'm going to retire in two years. That's someday. That's one day, someday that's believing, you know, like the Lord told me, Teresa, stop believing. That's one day, someday. Okay, but now she started to say, I'm going to retire in 2023. I'm going to retire in 2023. Why? Because now she's got an expectation and a goal on to when she's going to retire. So she's not doing the one day, someday. And so maybe if we quit complaining, and that's hell's words, right? Complaining is what is, is hell's language. Praise is God's language. 
And so if we begin to speak the language of heaven, then our life will change. And if we quit complaining, our life would be so much better. We wouldn't have this uh, horrible, terrible life where everybody's against you. Have you ever seen those people? I know you guys have because, you know, and I love every single one of you. Hey, Miss Vivian. Um, but let me tell you something. Have you ever seen those people that they, I went to Walmart and I, there's one girl comes on Facebook. I won't even listen to her because everywhere she goes, I was went to on this flight and everything went to hell in the handbasket. And then I went to Walmart and everything went to hell in the handbasket. And then I went to Target and everything went to hell in the handbasket. And I'm like, you know, if you quit complaining and quit speaking that out, maybe you could have a good flight. Maybe you could have a good trip to Walmart or to Target. But if we sit around and all we do is complain, you know what you're going to reap? Complaining. That's all you're going to have is trouble. Because we reap what we sow. You sow complaining, you're going to reap complaining. You sow trauma, you're going to reap trauma. But if we begin to sow blessings, if we begin to speak blessing, if we begin to bless others, if we begin to go on assignment, Lord, send me on assignment. Lord, let me see your goodness. Let me see your mercy. Lord, and start smiling at people that don't smile at you. Start talking to people who don't talk at you. And I remember I was going into I was going into Walmart. There was a homeless guy sitting there. And as I was going in, you know, my husband and I used to really go out and feed the homeless. And I still have bags and um, we will stop and, and feed people now. But I was going into Walmart and he said he was sitting there. And when I went by, I said, Hey, how are you? And I just smiled. And he looked up at me because he was sitting there. He's like, Are you talking to me? I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, how are you doing? He said, you're talking to me? I said, yes, I'm talking to you. He's like, you see me? I was like, yeah, I see you sitting here. How are you doing today? He said, I'm doing great. I can't believe somebody spoke to me today. And I said, well, yeah, I see you. I just wanted to know how you were doing. He said, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for your beautiful smile and for talking to me. And then I said, well, have a great day. And I walk into Walmart. We walk by people all the time and we don't see people. But when you start giving out, you, you begin to see the people. They're not just people passing you by. They're not just some people in Walmart. They're not just some people in Target. They're not just some people in Burks or, or the food line or whatever grocery store, wherever you go. These are people that you can be on assignment that God has you and he wants you to see the people around you. He wants you to recognize the people around you. And if all you're doing is sowing a smile, hey, have a good day. I will, I will talk to people on purpose. I will... I actually talk to people on purpose, say, hey, how are you doing? I will talk to the cashier, I call her by name. If she has her, her name tag on or he has his name tag on, I'll say, hey, how are you doing? In fact, I went into the bank yesterday and I think this is hilarious. And the, the lady that was the teller that was waiting on me, her name was Teresa Wilson. I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, and she lives, and, and she works a mile from here, and I didn't even know that there was another Teresa Wilson in this area, and yet there she is, and so I was like, hey, Teresa Wilson, nice to meet you, beautiful name, and we have the same name, and we just struck up a conversation, right, because I see you, and when you call these people by name, you're saying, I see you, behind the cashier, that's behind there, and the one thing that I never do, ever, 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 is I'm not going to check out and be talking on the phone and not recognize the person. I think that is so rude. I will I will say, let me, I'm checking out, let me call you back. Now, I will talk to you if I'm checking out myself because, and sometimes I may be standing there talking to myself, <laughs> but if I'm there as a cashier and somebody else is, is, is there, I want to recognize them, I want to acknowledge them, and I will even, if I have a waitress or waiter to come over and wait on me, I will ask them their name. Hey, what is your name? And then from that moment forward, even if I have to write it somewhere so I don't forget it from that day forward, I'm going to call them by name. And the reason why you do that is saying, okay, Stacy, I recognize you. Tracy, I recognize you. And you're calling them by name and you're reaping that love. You, you're sending that love out and so that you will reap that love. And so <clears throat> I want you to know that God has a path laid out for you. He has a path laid out for you. And there is a way out. There's a way out of struggle. You don't have to stay on the struggle bus. You don't have to stay in poverty. There is a way out. And 
last night, man, it was powerful. We met um, at, at the beginning of April. I started, it's called Wealth Builder Boot Camp. And I was like, there's a pilot program that I started because I've helped other people come out of poverty, but this is one that I wanted to do that actually activated the people and actually we take steps to come out. So it's, it's, um, it's not just hearing, but it's actually doing, going out into the community. And so last night it was so powerful and the spirit was there. The Holy Spirit was there. And I was so excited because I see the miracles happening in the people's lives. And I remember um, that they, it's like an awakening in their spirit as they are learning how to operate in the kingdom of God. If we learn the principles, we learn to operate in the kingdom of of God and we learn how okay how does God operate then we can operate those same principles and we can do the same things and we are doing it as a group and the anointing is so strong in that group oh my word it's just amazing and so um, we the, one of the first assignments was to sow ten dollars into somebody to what I wanted you to do is sow a ten dollar seed and so Monique sowed a ten dollar seed and she received a, a refund check from solar energy for seven hundred and fifty dollars that she didn't even know she was getting back and so what happens is is that God whatever funds are being held up as you begin to give out whatever funds that has been held up god shows you and then it begins to come in and just the miraculous power of that over a ten dollar seed and normally we don't recognize when god gives us something and so when you do planned giving then when things start to happen you recognize wait a second this is really happening um and then Cheryl, she gave away $20 and her husband comes home and says, you're not going to believe this, but I got a $200 bonus. He's like, the, all of the um, supervisors get bonuses and my supervisor just happened to share it with me. He's like, hey, I want to share this with you. Gave him $200. And she's like, look, you got to understand, I gave away $20 and, and we re immediately, immediately. And so people want to know, well, how do you access the supernatural wealth? If you're a born again believer, you access heaven because now you're a citizen of heaven. How do you activate it? By giving, by uh, starting by giving. And, um, and then to take it to a higher level, Lisa gave away $500 and she received back $5,000. She's like, man, I'm going to go take it to the next level. She said, I'm going to $10,000. She said, I'm going to ask God for $10,000 and I'm going to ask him how much money I need to sow for that. And last night, Sandy, we learned from Sandy's mother-in-law that she sold $1,000 and won a house over, and I think the house was worth over $350,000, um, if I think I'm correct. So Sandy was telling us last night in the group about that. Is that amazing? That is so awesome. And that's so amazing. And that's just from sowing seed and having a target for the seed. And... So anyway, you may have missed out on the boot camp, but don't worry. In the description, I have put a link because what I felt led to do is I had this program and it's a course. I had a book. It's called The Five Best Ways to Take Control of Your Money. And what I did is I actually created a little um, a little mini course where it has the workbook, it has the book and the teaching and it's and instead of going through wealth builder because it's closed now and you can't you can't access it but this is a mini teaching and it's called we retitled it the first five steps to money mastery and so it's a whole teaching and a video package to introduce you to what we're doing uh, and this is a little level and introduce you to what we're actually doing on a large scale and it's a brand new video series and it's about teaching you how to go deeper with the Lord but it's also teaching you the 12 principles so you get used to it and you can hear it and um, see there uh, yes Sandy yes uh, that was an awesome testimony last night so in the in the five steps to money mastery you can you'll get strategies that you can implement immediately and it's not, like I said, it's not on boot camp level. This is on a lower level. You're going to learn um, techniques that you can get financial freedom really fast. You can learn the five methods to instantly refocus your financial situation. And I'm telling you, immediately, when we sold that $10, immediately things started opening up. The supernatural wealth started being activated. And so the, wealth, the um, boot camp is closed, but you can still learn these kingdom principles in this five steps to money mastery. I got the link and you can, um, 
and you can access it and get started. You don't have to wait till the next boot camp comes around. You can actually get started today. And the reason why I did that is because I realized that not, um, once the boot camp closed, I still wanted you to have access to the teaching. So I have linked it up, beautiful people, and you can go there and get it. Um, and yes, Monique, and the blessing came right on time. I'm telling you, if God is not good, the blessing came in at the right moment, at the right second. And it opens up a whole new world to you. You're like, what? The sky is the limit. And so when we you understand the principles that I teach, the ones that God downloaded to me when I was living paycheck to paycheck, and I was one paycheck from being homeless, when God downloaded it to me, I put this little video package together so you guys can access it now. You don't have to wait till the next boot camp comes. You can access it now because at the beginning of this year, like I've told you before, God told me he wants his people to come out of poverty. This is your year to do it. This is your time. This is your, I'm telling you, this is your time. This is your purpose. You don't want to sit on it. You don't want to wait. You really want to go do it now because if you, okay, what happens in a year? You're going to be at the same place. If you don't have a new mindset, if you don't understand biblical principles, you are never coming out of poverty. And so in those 12, in the five steps to money mastery, I teach you that. So anyway, beautiful people, I'm going to close out here. Thank you all for being live. And I'm going to put, um, it will stay, this stays in my Facebook page. I'm going to put it on a YouTube channel. But share this video with anybody that you think needs it. Please share it. Um, anybody that you think, hey, they really need to hear this teaching, please share this video so that they can, so that they can come out of poverty too. I want to work with as many people as I possibly can, help them start living a life of freedom and start and stop being tied up in poverty. It's horrendous. It's tormentuous. It's terrible. Uh, where you can't sleep, you can't eat because you don't know where, how you're going to pay the next bill. God didn't intend you to live like that. And so I'm going to help you guys come out. That's, that's my mandate. That's my assignment, beautiful people. So anyway, I'm going to do the multiplication prayer for you. And, um, and like I said, just like, share, and follow it. It helps me out. So, Lord, we just thank you for today. I thank you for everyone who shows up live and, and the ones who watch the replay. Lord, I'm asking, Heavenly Father, any tithe, offering, or seed that they have given out, Lord, we place it into your kingdom, and we ask that you bless it and multiply it where it went out to and back into them. Lord, we're asking that you rebuke the devourer on their behalf because that's what your word says in Malachi. Lord, anything that the enemy has stolen, we ask, Heavenly Father, you said, your word says, if the thief is caught, he has to pay it back seven times. So, Lord, we're asking, Heavenly Father, that he has to start paying that back today. The thief has been caught. He's in John 10, 10. And so, Lord, we ask, Heavenly Father, even if it bankrupts hell, he has to start paying that back. Lord, I'm asking, Heavenly Father, where there is poverty, let there be prosperity. Where there is lack, let there be abundance. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done in all of us, in earth, on earth, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, beautiful people, I will talk to you later. If you got any questions, you can always email me at www.TeresaBWilsonCoaching at gmail.com. And also have a free gift for you, Seven Places to Find Hidden Money. Go to www.TeresaBWilson.com and find your missing money. All right, talk to you later. Love you guys. Bye.